Infanticide, one of the most commonly practiced social norms in human history. From the Greeks and Romans to ancient China, virtually every civilization in human history took part in this gruesome practice. Even Aristotle, the renowned Athenian philosopher, declared that no deformed child should live. Indeed, a helpless newborn has only recently evoked a protective and loving response. So, what motivated the practice of infanticide and what were its methods? Most modern historians would argue that infanticide was utilized as an effective form of population control, especially in countries that were poor and overcrowded. Sex-selective infanticide, or female infanticide, was also a common practice, usually to reduce the financial burden of bearing a daughter. The practice would become so widespread that a famous Roman expression was, everyone raises a son, including a poor man, but even a rich man will abandon a daughter. The practice of female infanticide was also extremely common in China and there is evidence to suggest that infanticide dates back to at least 800 BCE. Indeed, sex-selective infanticide occurred so frequently that the ramifications continue to be felt in the modern nation-state of China. Other historical motivators for infanticide included illegitimacy, birth defects and religious superstition. In the Middle Ages, a time of widespread superstition a newborn child was not always considered a gift from God. An infant born with physical defects or behavioral abnormalities would often be considered an evil omen or the product of demonic, supernatural forces. Such children would likely be killed by their parents or community who deemed the child a threat. One of the oldest recorded methods of infanticide was exposure and abandonment. This required newborn babies or infants to be abandoned and left to die as a result of starvation, dehydration or an animal attack. While the ancient Greeks considered the practice of human sacrifice barbarous, the exposure of infants was widely practiced. The social norm of abandonment was adopted by the Romans as well, and historians estimate that up to 40% of all babies died of exposure during the late period of the Roman Empire. Other methods of infanticide in ancient history include suffocation and drowning. In Japan, for instance, the common slang for infanticide was mabiki, a typical method for population control where parents would smother a wet paper over the infant's mouth and nose. Such practices continued in Japan well into the 20th century. Furthermore, in India, it was not uncommon for parents to throw a newborn child into the Ganges River, where they would either drown or be attacked. This practice was so common in South Asia that the British were unable to outlaw the practice until the 19th century. The indigenous empires of the Americas, such as the Aztecs, Incas and Mayans, were well renowned for their practice of child human sacrifice with thousands of children being sacrificed yearly. However, this did not reduce the regularity of parental or communal infanticide, with historical evidence suggesting that infanticide being widespread on the continent and likely a social norm even among the Inuit who inhabited the regions of modern-day Canada. Infanticide was also an old-rooted tradition in many ancient African societies and cultures where bearing twins would be considered unlucky or a bad omen. While infanticide still occurs in the 21st century, it has become almost non-existent in the Western world. It transpires in fewer than 2.1 per 100,000 births in the West and is considered taboo. Unlike in the ancient world, newborn babies are now considered vulnerable, precious, cute and deserving of human admiration. We now consider the persecution or killing of children born with physical or behavioral abnormalities as barbaric and instead admire those living with disabilities. Similarly, we no longer believe that abnormalities nor bearing twins is the result of a bad omen or an evil supernatural force.
and we now believe that female infants are of equal worth to their male counterparts. But what we all now know is that this is a relatively new phenomenon, because for the vast majority of time in human history, the killing of newborn infants was totally acceptable. At times, it was even considered a moral virtue, as infanticide was thought to ward off evil forces or reduce the expansion of a growing population. A new channel dedicated to uncovering history's most important overlooked stories. If you liked this video, please subscribe below.